to do a couple clean house items that we always do uh, at the start of our, our presentations. First and foremost, this is all about you and what you want to hear about, learn about. So we encourage you to come with questions. Several of you put questions in in, as part of your registration. We're so grateful for those. I will absolutely moderate those in. But this is also an opportunity for you to actually ask your questions um, directly if you would like. So if you have questions, you can chat to us and, or raise your hand and we'll moderate those in towards the end. And I'll prompt you when we get to the questions section. But just remember that's the point of this is we want you to have that opportunity. Second, and very importantly, uh, we, are a proud, we are proud to uh, partner with Delta Dental of Michigan. We're gonna learn a lot more about Delta Dental, um, but we are, we are proud partners and we're, we're excited to have them join us again this year as our presenting sponsor. Uh, they are a dental insurance company and highly, highly committed to building a healthy, smart and vibrant community all around them. And we've talked every session, you've heard me, um, why it's so important to us. I mean, it's, it's, it's so important to public health, education and economic development, uh, the oral health that, that is, and um, really confounded by these underlying issues like poverty and access to healthcare and education. And we're gonna learn a lot about why that's so important to Delta Dental and part of their fabric um, as, a, as a company. But uh, again, we're, we're proud to, to partner with them. I'm gonna give them a quick shout out with a, a commercial and then we're going to get things started. get started and this is again one more time I'm going to prompt you would love to see your lovely faces so if you can turn on your your cameras um, it's just it's more fun than looking at the black screens we'd love to see you all thank you I see a couple more pop up thank you we enjoy that but today we are uh, very excited and proud and honored to join uh, Gorn Jerkovic Join us, he is the CEO and president at Delta Dental of Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana. And as I just said, they are our sponsors and we are had such a great conversation with Goran last year and we're excited to, to uh, continue the conversation this summer. So thank you again, Goran, for joining us and for your, your continued support for this program. Thanks, Gary. Happy to be with everybody today and uh, really excited for the conversation. Yeah, so I see you and I were just talking. I see you're in the office. I'm in the office. This is last year is, man, it's been a year since we talked. Uh, and and we'll we'll get into a lot of the career, but I know we also talked a lot about just the the climate in which we are in right now. Tell us a little bit about uh, Delta Dental, where you guys are at, how, how you're feeling and, and what this pandemic has really done for you, but what you guys are looking forward to moving forward. Yeah, you know, just like uh, everybody on this call and, and everybody out there is dealing with, right, the pandemic hit, hit hard and it hit fast and it impacted everybody's life, work and, and personal. And um, so for us, you know, we are, our first and foremost thing was to make sure that the health and safety of our employees was protected. So, you know, as soon as things started to go a bit sideways, you know, we um, we went completely virtual um, right out of the gate, even before the governor, I think back in March, mid-March of, of 2020, um, we went um, completely uh, uh, remote and, you know, for the most part have remained that way. Um, I actually, I, I think I was remote for a few weeks and then just really couldn't operate that way. So I came in the office probably after a few weeks and have been in the office ever since. Um, we've got 
you know, some folks in our operation that has to be in the building in order to, to do certain functions, uh, being an insurance company, we're obviously processing claims and mailing checks and that kind of thing. So there are functions that people had to remain here. Um, but I'm very proud of our employees, you know, the thousand plus employees that we have and, and how they were able to adapt to the, to kind of the virtual experience and the remote work. And, you know, we didn't really miss a beat um, as an organization. We actually, you know, grew through this pandemic. Um, you know, we wanted to make sure that we took care of everybody and our customers and constituents and, and, and people that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, that was really important to us. Um, but at the core, we wanted to make sure our employees, you know, had what they needed and felt comfortable. So I think we did a pretty good job with that. And then now we're kind of working through the process that everybody's working through and what does kind of the future state look like. It's amazing to me, you know, 50 years old, I've been in kind of the workforce for 30 years and everything was done a certain way. And then in a year, the script has been completely flipped, right? Now the remote seems to be the norm and in-person seems to be, especially it's for corporate work anyway, seems to be kind of, you know, out the door. So just trying to find what that balance looks like and it'll take time. You know, I think everybody has been remote. They probably kind of feel like, hey, I want to want to remain remote. And then I think hopefully we'll see, because in my opinion, I think we're we're better off in person. That's just kind of my my feel. And again, maybe that's just being a bit old school. But um, so, you know, we're kind of working through that. And I think kind of when we get to Labor Day, we're going to have some more folks come into the building and, and hopefully kind of bring some more energy in because, you know, I mentioned, I think we did very well as an organization through the pandemic, but I think, you know, when we see our teams kind of come together, I think there'll be kind of a renewed energy, at least that's what I'm hopeful for. So that's kind of the, the state of, of Delta as it is, but, you know, again, just very happy about how things have, have gone through the pandemic as much of a challenge as it's been. Yeah. So let's get to, to you, the heart of you and, and your career path. I always love starting with the, these questions uh, because so many of our, our attendees are in college or recent graduates, but tell us a little bit about where did you go to school and what did you study? Yeah, so I'm, I'm very happy and excited to see, I can see Travis, Andrew and Chandler, you've got a little bit of green and white going on in the background, so that's nice to see. So I am a graduate of Michigan State, um, graduated back in 93, and I, I majored in accounting, um, and I took a job with Plan Moran, which is a public accounting firm here in East Lansing, and was with them for probably, gosh, I think it was six or seven years, and, you know, in public accounting, which is a great opportunity and a great career. Actually, my brother's a partner in, a, in an account, in a public accounting firm. Um, but you kind of got to make that decision whether that's kind of the long haul for you or not. And so um, I was lucky enough that Delta Dental was a customer client of Plant Moran mm. and kind of got to know things about them. And, and so when I kind of made my career decision, like what that stepping off point was going to be, I took kind of, I, I don't know that I call it a risk, but more the opportunity, um, what was available at Delta. So I joined Delta in 1999 um as as a manager in the accounting department and then just kind of worked my way through the typical positions in finance um you know up through controller vice president cfo and then you know started to get a lot more involved in the strategic nature of our companies and um so a couple of years ago i became ceo and before that I had some other you know strategy roles that were great uh, great <laughs> opportunities for me so um you know, I, I would, I would say that the organization that I work for, Delta Dental, I, I couldn't be happier as far as a career choice for me. Yeah, tell, tell us a little bit about Delta Dental. I know, I know, I gave an overview, but uh, last year we joked, it's like, oh, it's a dental, dental insurance. But uh, I think one of the key points that we continue to make, and uh, throughout everyone that we talk to, is that these companies are so large that there's so many different divisions. And like you said, you came in as uh, from accounting, um, someone could come in with from a business background or, you know, there's so many different avenues within these larger companies. So we'd love to hear more about Delta Dental and the work that you guys do. And then 
And then from there, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to transition to the community work that you do because it's pretty sure. incredible. Yep. Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and I know we, we joked about this last year and we kind of joke about it kind of inside joke and you think about like, okay, so yep, you're a finance person. Okay, great. And you work for an insurance company and it's a dental insurance company. Like it, there isn't a lot of sex appeal, like in that kind of, or doesn't seem like it, but I think, I think the thing that, that, from our organization, it's all about opportunity. So if you think about Delta Dental, we're an insurance company. So we provide um, dental, dental benefits. A lot of you, I'm sure, are probably Delta Dental card holders through your parents or through the university. Um, so oral health is our thing, right? We want to make sure that, that our um, end, you know, kind of um, subscribers, so the individuals, they've got the ability and you know, the access to get great oral health care, because as we know, you know, the, the mouth is a huge part of the body and in and, and a huge component of your health. So that is at core of what we do. We provide dental benefits mainly to uh, employer groups. So, um, you know, c companies that you've probably heard of and deal with every day um, provide dental benefits to their employees. And that's what we do. And we have contracts with with the, uh, the dentists and with the customers. And we kind of bring that relationship together to provide uh, benefits to the end subscriber. Now that's to me kind of just one side of what we do. We're a pretty large organization. Um, and, and like I said, and, and for us to make sure that we've kind of got a continuing path of bringing talent uh, in-house, which is a huge kind of strategic pillar for us. Um, you know, we want to make sure that the opportunities for employees young and you know mid-career and later in career you know they've got the opportunity to kind of you know establish the career that they want and so when you think about us as an organization you know we've got the typical you know departments that you would think of finance operations and in our case we've got claims customer service you know but we've also got other opportunities We've got investment companies that do venture capital and private equity investing. Um, we've got IT companies that are underneath our umbrella of, uh, of organizations. So we try to kind of provide or have the opportunity to provide, especially like interns, folks like that are on the call, you know, the opportunity to kind of bounce within our organization, kind of find the right path for them and um, support them in that, in that path. So, that's kind of how we view it. And, and like I said, when we look at our strategic plan, you know, attract and retain is a huge component of that. You know, we need to bring the best and the brightest uh, because we think from our organization, we, we play a vital role, um, you know, not only just providing benefits, but as you mentioned, Carrie, in the, in the community. So, you know, we're a mission-based organization. Um, so we, we, I think, provide a lot of opportunity, both from a professional development, but also from having opportunities to help uh, in the community as well. Wow, I, I didn't even know about the venture capital side of things. So I, it just goes to show, I, I know a lot about Delta Dental and, and I didn't even know that component. So, um, you know, it's, it's just a reminder to all of you as you look for jobs, as you look at these companies, you know, dive a little deeper and not just surface level of, um, you know, name or, or what they do. There's, there are opportunities uh, everywhere within these organizations. Um, one of which I, again, to prompt you towards the community, that's something that's near and dear to my heart. I love the work that you guys do um, within the community. Can you talk a little bit about number one, what you do, but, uh, but, almost more importantly, why? Why is it such a major component to your business and mission? Yeah, so, you know, I, th I think there's a, a few components to it. Um, like I mentioned, we are a mission-based organization. Um, you know, you talked about building healthy, smart, vibrant communities. So, you know, we, we cover so many people in the state of Michigan and the state of Ohio and the state of Indiana, millions of people. And so we wanna make sure that we are where you know, our end customers and our employees, we want to be in the areas that they're in. We want to be supporting uh, those local communities. And, you know, we kind of do it at, at, a, at a higher level and, and in a lower level as well. You know, we, we do a lot of work with the underserved, right? We want to make sure, you know, we've got, we've got companies that provide dental benefits, but we've also got, um, 
you know, the Medicaid and Medicare populations that we support, those that can't afford the benefits. You know, we work with organizations and entities that help provide the opportunity for them to get the oral health care that they need. Um, you know, we've got a foundation, uh, a large foundation that, that is, is the Delta Dental Foundation that, that we obviously support and created. And it does a lot of, of benefit work as well, grants uh, and different programs to, to help, you know, the underserved. So, you know, there's kind of that aspect of it that we kind of focus to make sure that our product that we provide is available to all those that can afford and those that can't. Um, and then that kind of dovetails to, you know, working and, and doing things in the communities to help support, you know, economic growth in the, in that area, or just helping people, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, lace up our boots and put on our work gloves and go clear out, um, you know, areas in, in Detroit trying to help, you know, beautify locations. And, and we try to, you know, we've got a lot of programs with, with young kids with, you know, blessings in a backpack or filling, filling um, backpacks full of food for kids who, you know, don't have, you know, they've got food insecurities, they've got issues. And so we just try to find areas that we think, you know, people are in need. Um, and, and I think there's, there's opportunities to partner and we have with other organizations uh, in all the areas that we operate. You know, we're, we're right now going through a big um, sponsorship, the De Detroit area, uh, the Detroit Riverfront, uh, the park that we sponsored there. Um, that'll be an opportunity for kids, you know, not only to play, but to, to learn as well. So there's a lot of different things that we're involved in from an organization. And, and I'll tell you what, it's a huge thing for employees. So I, I think as, as this group is looking, as you mentioned, Carrie, for jobs and, and, and what they want to do for the next few years of their lives. I think, you know, those are, if, if that's something that appeals to you as, as an individual, I think those are the questions that you ask when you go through the interviews, you know, if, if, if kind of community-based things are, are important to you, a lot of organizations have that opportunity. And I would, I would, again, as you mentioned, Carrie, kind of dive into that, see what the organization's about and see if it's the right fit for you. Yeah. Absolutely. Great advice. Uh, okay. So in looking at your resume and I know I only, I have a, a quick glimpse at it, but you have been uh, in accounting, you've been chief risk officer, chief financial officer, now chief operating officer and well, chief operating officer, now CEO. What has been your favorite role and why? Uh, my current role is my favorite role. And, and it's not because it's, you know, the top role or anything like that. It's just, you know, now I'm, you know, my job is to help set the strategy of the organization. And so I get to work with all the different areas and all the different leaders in those areas. And, and ultimately, I know it might sound corny, but that's, to me, the position that I'm in is like the position that's the kind of the difference maker. Like I, I get to be involved in and setting the direction of what our organization you know, is responsible for what we're involved in. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, you know, in, in I loved all my other roles because they built into the spot where I'm at, but I love the role that I have and it's, and it's not because it's the CEO role, but it's just because, you know, I, I have that responsibility on my shoulders along with, with my team here that sets the direction of who we are and what we do. Yeah. So we've talked about Delta Dental and, and, your commitment on that behalf uh, to the community, but you yourself are involved in a lot of boards. Can you talk a little bit about as, as you have grown in your career, what your commitment has been to serving on boards, what that means to, to, to just give some context um, and the importance uh, of those boards and, and your, your personal involvement in the community? Yeah, so I, I think, um... Again, as, as you kind of think about your career path and, and what you want to do, I think looking at opportunities that you can participate in different boards, I think is important. And, and there's, you, you'll have different opportunities as you go through your career, right? You'll have kind of boards like Delta Dental's board, which may be an opportunity to help govern an organization like ours. But I think just as important are community related boards with nonprofit organizations and, and you know, folks that have a mission and they need you to kind of be their spokesperson. And I think that that to me is the more fulfilling side of it for me. Um, 
So, you know, I was involved in a couple of things and, and one of the, the, the more, I guess, fulfilling and, and fun things that I was involved in is with, with Sparrow Hospital. And, um, you know, we were involved, there's like a, it's called the Dapper Dads Challenge, but it's related to women's health. So a bunch of dads in the area basically kind of try to gather as much money and support as possible. And you go strut the one runway for a night. And, but the whole purpose is to try to um, honestly raise as much money as possible for, in our case, it was to support women's health um, and, and provide, an, um, you know, whether it be um, machines in, in the hospital system that would help with cancer research and things like that. So those are the kind of things that for me are the most fulfilling working with organizations like that, where, you know, you can truly make a difference and, and provide support and, and direction. Um, you know, again, I also love working with organizations like economic development organizations. I'm on a couple of, of different ones, one in Lansing and one more broad, broader based in Michigan. And again, those are the places where, you know, you've got the responsibility as a CEO or as a leader in an organization to, you know, not only worry about what's the most beneficial or, or best thing for your organization. But, you know, if the state of Michigan or the state of Indiana or state of Ohio, wherever you're at, if, if, if that state wins, then you know you're gonna do well as an organization. So I think those are the kind of, of, of opportunities that I would look for. And I don't think it's ever too early for any of you to be involved in those things in the community and, and, and get those opportunities. I jump at them. I think they're, they're good. They'll, I don't think they'll ever be a bad thing. I think it's only going to help your career development. And it's incredible networking as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you, you build your, your network with like-minded folks and, um, you know, and, and usually you, you join a board with something that is near and dear to your heart. And so it's near and dear probably to, to the other folks on that, on that board. And so you just get to meet uh, those like-minded people and, and continue to build your network. So i um, always been a big proponent of boards and, and it's, it's, uh, it's a, it, it's a huge part of your career. I believe it's, it's your philanthropic career as I, as I like to say. And so I appreciate um, some insight there from you. All right, guys, this is the, this is the time that you get Gorn's in the hot seat now, uh, <laughs> so to say, but I have a few questions that I will moderate from registration, but if you have a question, please put it in the chat. And, or if you would like to ask it of, um, ask it yourself, uh, just raise your hand or say, I have a question, put it in chat so that I can uh, prompt you. But this is the time for questions. So either put those questions in the chat and uh, we'll get to them, uh, but we'll start off with those that came through registration. Okay, so obviously we've touched on COVID this whole, last year you said it was a great great year for your business but one question that did come in was how has the past year specifically COVID-19 closures of dental practices impacted your business and oral health um, and overall health as as a intractable connected wow this is a very very well written question but essentially how has the, especially the closures of dental practices, that's a great component to, to touch on. So. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great question. Especially for us. Um, yeah. yeah. So dental offices in the three States that we operate, I mean, across the country, they, they closed down and in the three States that we operated in, in Michigan, especially, I think was maybe the second or the last that kind of opened back up and, and allowed dental offices to open back up. So obviously for a couple of reasons, a huge impact to us, one, when your product is dental benefits and the end subscriber can't go to the dentist, you know, that's a huge issue. And, and some people may think, well, that means you're not paying out claims. So it's gotta be good for you. Well, our, our purpose is not necessarily to suppress claims. Our purpose is for people to get to the dental office and get the care and the, and the maintenance and everything that they need. So that was a huge issue. And so, you know, we spent a lot of time working with local and government leaders to, um, to, to honestly talk to, about the fact that, you know, the dentists are in a very kind of specific, you know, if you think about going to the dentist, probably all of you that go to the dentist have the dentist is, and, and pre-pandemic, right? Fully gowned up, gloves, masks, everything, where you might go to your, your, you know, your medical provider and they're in jeans and a lab coat. And so the dentists have dealt with infectious disease for a long time. So it was a, it was a tough challenge for us to try to get 
you know, the kind of the, the, the government to understand that, you know, dentists understand the nature of infectious disease and they're able to handle it. So we were very much a proponent of making sure that the offices, when it was safe, would be able to open up and, and, and provide dental care. And, and then the other side of that is, you know, when you insure millions of individuals, you want to make sure your product is relevant. So when you've got all these customers on the sideline going, hey, our people aren't using the benefits, you know, that's a problem too, right? You want to make sure that they see the value in the dental benefit. And we actually, you know, we knew the right thing for us to do was make sure that our customers and the dentist were taken care of through the pandemic. So we provided for us, I think it was close to $100 million of relief to the dentists and to our customers because of the offices being closed. And, you know, we knew we were still collecting premium, but we knew that they weren't able to go to the dentist. So we wanted to make sure that we were doing the right thing by our, you know, stakeholders. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that we provided the, the right amount of relief. But it was, it was definitely a challenging time for us, as it was the medical profession, as, you know, everything other than COVID-related cases were basically kind of shut down and not, you know, allowed to, to, to get to the office and the care that they needed. Do you see that are the trends coming back pretty swiftly that folks are going, starting to, to go back to the dentist, feel more comfortable? Yeah, yeah I was actually, um, I, I thought when the offices closed and COVID was kind of at its peak and then the offices started sl slowly reopening, I thought we were going to see like still nobody go to the dentist because I thought people's attitude would be, well, COVID, right? They talk about it's it's an airborne disease, like who's going to want to go to the dentist and get that close to somebody. And, but once offices opened up and which was great for us, we saw everybody basically get back to the dentist. And when we compared like 2019 to 2020, you know, after the pandemic, we actually saw, you know, year over year, once the offices reopened up, it was actually a higher level of folks coming back to the office than it was you know, a year prior. So that pent up demand of being closed, people kind of went right back to the dentist, which was great to see. I mean, I, we were very happy and excited about that. Surprised, but happy. Yeah. That's great. It's great to hear. Yep. Uh, Noel from MSU asked, what is one thing you wish you would have done differently early in your career? Um, you know, I probably didn't put enough value on relationships, um, business, and, and honestly, personal, but more kind of when you talk about career, um, the fact of, you know, building my, my kind of relationship base. And like, Carrie, like you mentioned, and we talked about with boards and that kind of thing, you, you gain so much in the way of, you know, getting to know people in your field and other fields, and, and, and it, it could potentially provide opportunities later. Uh, for you if you decide, you know, maybe a potential career change or things like that. But I think the more that you can, you know, kind of build your relationships and, and your base of people, um, I think that was something that I didn't probably take to heart, even though people, you know, um, provided opportunities to do that. I, I think building building relationships and, and really kind of focusing on communication and, and that kind of thing, that to me was something that I didn't focus on until a little bit later in my career. And I'm glad I did uh, because it's provided a lot of opportunity uh, professionally and, and personally. Yeah. So somewhat in a similar vein, uh, Rhonda asks, what do you think is the best way to work your way into a leadership position following graduation? <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I would say, you know, I, I think obviously trying to find a, a company or kind of an industry that is very interesting to you. I think, you know, trying to, trying to get into the field that you want to get into. Um, and then I, I would just say, you know, it's going to sound cliche or kind of old school, but just, just kind of, you know, and, and don't be afraid to ask about mentoring. Cause I think that is a great way to kind of really understand and really kind of get some insider information. And, and look, I, I would tell you that my, myself and my entire executive team would look very favorably on folks, you know, asking us or, you know, maybe a manager or director in our organization, you know, to be their mentor. Because I think you learn a lot, 
you know, when you're able to have somebody and ask, be able to ask kind of more of the detailed questions and, and understand more about the organization and the company, I would tell you to, if it's, if it's a job that is of interest to you and an industry that is of interest to you, dive in deep, like get to know the ins and the outs of the organization, because as leaders, like that's going to be your job. Like your job is to, is to advance the organization and, and strategically participate. And so I think the more that you can understand about the organization and the roles that you want to potentially be in, I think that's going to make you stand out. And I think that's going to bring attention to you. And, and I, and I, like I said, I don't think you should be afraid to ask for that help and to make that known that you're, you know, it may be, a, I'm not sure I'd walk in the first day and, and, and say that I want to be the CEO, but I think it's okay to say, look, I, I love the company. I love what it's about. And so I would like to progress through and, and what are the paths to do that? Because I think good organizations would tell you, here's your opportunities, potentially here's your paths and build career development plans to help you through that. And I think that's, you know, that, that to me is what management and moving through a company is all about. Like my, there's, there's a certain point in your career or my career where it was more about other people than it was about myself. You know, now my, my responsibility is to figure out what the next level of people and, and succession is in our organization and to identify them and build plans for them. So um, I, I think that's an important thing is to understand that within your organization. So we have, we have someone that has interned in, the in, in a couple different insurance agencies uh, through high school years and, and uh, now as well. And they're very much very interested in it and want to hear your take on, do you think there's still a big market and opportunity, uh, in particular, this idea of AI and how that will have a play on, on uh, the industry and employees? Yeah, so artificial intelligence we're talking about? Yeah, I would assume. Yeah, yeah actually, it's, it's uh, interesting timing because we're actually going through those conversations now. Uh, I, I think AI in probably most all industries is going to is is and, and will play a significant and increasing role it, it does in the insurance industry um you know when you look at you know a, a lot of our the way that we do things right we have call centers we have individuals and and as i'm sure a lot of you have gone on to different websites and look for the support bot chat in the corner and all that um you know i, I think those are kind of table stakes i think everybody should and needs to have kind of the the the, the standard kind of AI tools that, that probably people can, can think about. But in our industry, we use AI for things like claims management, management and fraud, waste and abuse, right? We look at, at patterns of data. You know, we're all about data analytics. And so we use AI in ways to kind of manage our business and protect data and, you know, create new products. So I would say, AI in, in our industry is has been there for a while and I think will continue to make a significant impact. Um, so I, I would I would say that that, you know, if you looked at our, our employees, the majority of our employees are IT professionals. You know, mm -hmm. they're not they're not call center agents, they're not claims operators, they are IT. You know, our biggest budget line item is IT spend, you know, whether that's development whether that's security, you know, we, we have so much health information that we have to protect that cybersecurity and, and that, uh, I would tell you, I think probably if you go back six, seven years in our company, we may have had two people working in security. Now we probably have 30. So it just kind of goes to show you how things are advancing and getting more technologically advanced. And then along with that, you have to protect that information. So I think when you look at the world of IT and AI, um, for us, it's going to play a significant role going forward. All right, we have some great questions. And I want to be conscious of your time because we've gone over, but do you have time for a couple more? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay, so lots of questions, and I'll take Tommy's, but we've gotten a few that are, are in this vein. Um, but basically, going from as one person put it, worker to now leadership role. Tommy asks, what do you think has been your biggest asset for rising to leadership positions? Yeah, good question. Um, 
You know, I, I think, I think being humble is an important characteristic for people. I think, you know, working with like-minded and putting together like-minded teams. Um, I would tell you like my career path and, and people that, that I've worked with and, you know, haven't always agreed on, um, you know, kind of the approach and, um, and, and maybe attitudes. Um, I have kind of a no, I guess I won't say it, but it's kind of like a no a-hole rule. Like we, we, we hire people that, that work with us very um, kind of on the same page, same attitude, same goals. Uh, Cause I think it's, when you look at the team that you want to be with and the team that you want to be a part of, right. I think there's, you got to be moving in the same direction and kind of have the same attitude on things. You're not going to always agree on everything, nor should you probably. Um, but when I looked at like, you know, my path of, of working up through my development, um, I think it was, it was, you know, I took a, a very, you know, big interest in the organization and its mission. And I think, you know, there's some people that come to work every day, honestly, and it's their job and that's great. Every employer needs individuals like that. And then I think there's others that come to it and it's their career. And I think that's a, a very distinct, different thing. So I tell you, you know, and you might not find your career in your first one, two, three jobs, but ultimately you're probably going to find that career. And I think once you find it and kind of grab a hold of it, I think that's where, you know, you'll kind of start to see your opportunities to be able to advance and move into more management or st strategic roles. I think that's, you know, and, and that may not be everybody's, goal, but I think, um, I, to me, that's, I think, where you'll find the more fulfilling aspects of your, of your career. I think you're, you're muted. Oh, I got muted. <laughs> I love that distinction between the two, uh, jobs and career. Uh, what, what do you look for? So Aditya asks, like, what are the best qualities and traits in the, the employees at Delta Dental, but I'll also couple that with like, what, what are you looking for when you hire? Yeah, you know, we're going to look for obviously, um, you know, if we're looking for experienced folks, I mean, that's one thing. Um, I think, you know, looking at folks coming out of college, I, that, fine. To, I just skimming it. to me, that's huge. Like just that opportunity, like we want to provide opportunity to young, young folks, because I think there is, there's so much potential in, in this group and this generation kind of moving forward. And, and again, you know, we're a company that's been around for 60 years. We want to be around, which is very rare. Um, you know, when you look at like the life cycle of companies. Um, so, you know, we want to look for people that are, that are committed, um, that, that are, are about the organization, not necessarily only in it for themselves. Right. I mean, we want to, we want to make sure that we're bringing in folks that, you know, have that drive, um, to, to kind of move themselves and the organization forward. So, um, and, and, I, and I get it, like, you know, when you're 21, 22 coming into jobs, I, you know, you don't necessarily know exactly what you're looking for. Um, but I, I would say, you know, the opportunities are there. And in an organization like ours, like I said, I, th I think one of the things that, that it's, that's a benefit that we can provide to folks is, you know, you might come in under one job and and that may be okay for a while but i think we've got opportunity that you know ultimately if you want to look at at other you know you might be a finance major and we've got a finance department who does the typical finance financial reporting and that kind of thing but we've also got an investment company and ultimately if you determine that hey corporate finance was great for a couple of years but you know what I like this other opportunity that you have in investing in PE and VC or whatever it is. Is there an opportunity for me there? So I think, you know, as an organization, being able to provide those opportunities, I think, you know, we're looking for people that kind of have the right attitudes that we're that, that kind of match up with our corporate culture because um, it's distinct, you know, compared to other corporate cultures. Um, but I think it's, it's also up to us to give you not just one opportunity, but multiple opportunities that ultimately may fulfill like your career path. So based on, on your previous comment uh, and the distinction between job and career, Chloe is interested in how you knew 
that this was a career rather than a job? Yeah, I probably didn't know it walking into Delta Dental. Um, you know, when I, like I said, when I started at Plant Moran, you know, my brother was three years older than I was and he was on the path to be a partner. So naturally being a little brother, I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do, right? I'm just going to follow. And then I kind of got to the point where it's like, you know, this isn't for me in the end, end game. So my career was not going to be in public accounting. I didn't know walking into Delta Dental that that was going to be kind of my last potential job that I'd ever have or employer. Um, so that took a while, I think, to understand Delta Dental 20 years ago, very different than it is now, right? When I started 20 years ago, it was an organization that had three entities. Now it has 35. So I think helping build that from three to 35 and doing a lot of different things, that kind of, I was able to kind of build my career, you know, um, along with the organization and what I was doing. And it just kind of matched up. Like it, it was in line, like what I wanted to do and was able to do. I was able to kind of control some of that. So that really, for me, made it very obvious, like, yep, this is what is best for me and this is what I want to do. It's, in some cases, it might not be that obvious. Um, so, you know, I don't know that there's a magic formula to it, but I, you know, I, I think a lot of people know at some point in time, whether, right, they're, they've got a day-to-day -day job or they've got like, this is what I want to do. Like, I, I personally, it's, again, sounds corny, like, Every day I, I wake up, like I'm, I'm happy about going to work and to my job because of what I get to do. So I think, you know, are there days that I don't want to go to work? Yeah, there's days I don't want to go to work, but like I'm very fulfilled by my, my job and, and what my career has been. So I think that's, that's hugely important. I think that gives you kind of a fulfillment on your professional side. Mm -hmm.